December 1942. The world is at war. But it's Christmas, and in a miraculous change of spirit, the major powers of the world embrace the gift of giving. And instead of focusing on the complete annihilation of the enemy at all costs, they focus on showering each other with gifts and love. In this variant game, Xmas and Allies. The aim of the game is to spread your nation's festive joy to as many parts of the world as you can. And you'll do this by spending all your money on presents to give to the opposing side. The more presents you're able to deliver successfully, spreading festive cheer along the way, the more momentum you'll gain and the better you'll be at wishing everyone a very Merry Christmas. You ultimately want to reach an opposing capital so you can be right at their front door to sing them Christmas carols. If you can do this, the opposing player will donate all of their money to your cause. The team who can spread the most festive joy across the world, especially in its key cities, will be the winners. A player's turn is broken down into the following phases, starting out with the purchase presence phase. Here you'll think about the most meaningful gifts you could possibly give, and you'll spend as much money as you have on them. The various unit types in the game represent different types of presents and their gift givers. You won't be able to use presents you buy straight away because you probably ordered them from Amazon. They'll be delivered to you at the end of your turn. The next phase is the exchange presents phase. In this phase, you will declare where you are sending your presents. If the opposing side has presents of their own in the target territory, a Christmas party will commence, whereby both sides battle it out to see who has the best presents. This is where the dice come into play. You'll find that not every present you give will be the perfect gift, but some presents will definitely be a hit. Hits represent really thoughtful gifts, and for each hit, the opposing side will have to choose a unit to receive this gift, removing them from the game because they are now too busy playing with their awesome new toys. Whoever can score the most hits at a party will most likely have the best time and will spread their festive cheer to that territory. Once all Christmas parties have finished, the next phase of your turn will commence. The travel to Christmas gatherings phase. In this phase, you can no longer exchange gifts. Instead, you'll position your presence in optimal places for your next turn and see if your opponents will attend your Christmas parties on theirs. The next phase is the place presence under the tree phase. In this variant of the game, factories are considered to be Christmas trees. This is where you'll place the presents purchased at the beginning of your turns. The IPC value of a territory indicates how big the Christmas tree is and how many presents can be placed underneath per turn. And finally, the collect income phase. The more festive joy you can spread across the world, the more inspired and generous you'll feel, giving you tons of ideas for presents on Christmas. Ideas for presents on Christmas form the game's currency, abbreviated to IPCs. Let's have a look at the different units. Infantry represent your Uncle Barry or Great Grandma, who mean well, but really don't have any idea about what presents to get for people. These kinds of presents include knitted sweaters, socks, and even board games. As such, they only hit at one when attending Christmas parties. Grandmas are great hosts though, so they hit at two if they're the ones with guests. Artillery are like your wife or supportive sister who give advice to family members about what gifts to get for each person. Finding the perfect gift for someone is an art. Artillery boosts the hit value of infantry up to two. Tanks are the last minute shoppers who failed to do any shopping until the day before Christmas. They have an extended movement range, dashing around to try and find places still open on Christmas Eve. They end up spending a lot more money, but their gifts are decent. 
Air units are real party animals. They can fly in from all over to attend the most important Christmas gatherings. They spend a lot of money, but they're the life of the party. Unfortunately, they usually always end up getting too intoxicated and will have to be put back home in a taxi before the party ends. Bombers are like Santas. They can fly across half the map in a single turn to deliver the best presents. Bombers are also able to launch strategic bauble raids in which they fly over to enemy Christmas trees in an attempt to steal decorations from them. You can't put presents under a tree which isn't decorated, so you can use strategic bauble raids to force the other team to spend money redecorating. But just like in regular Axis and Allies variants, strategic bauble raids are considered to be a dick move. All players are in high festive spirits, but there is still competition to be had, and it goes beyond who can decorate their homes with the fanciest lights and biggest trees. The aim of the game is to see which team can spread the most festive joy and give out the most presents. The side that does so ultimately wins. Best of luck in your game, and may all of your rolls be ones with cinnamon and with icing on the top. They're my favourite Christmas snack. Merry Christmas.